All right, hey, this is uh, topic one, lesson two of unit two. This is our discussion about is it a function or not. First introduction to functions. Uh, so this is a function. We're writing domains and ranges, and a domain is just a list of all the possible x's. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way across. Now I'm trying to save some time here. So this is called a relation. A relation is just simply a relationship between an x and a y. And some relations are going to be called functions, and some of them are not functions. And what makes it a function is that each domain can only have one range. So if an x ha is 1, and it only has one range. 2 only has one range, 3 only has one range. All of the domains only have one range. This one is a function. Uh, the ranges are just a list of all the possible y's. These are all the x's, these are all the y's. So if the domains are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because they came first, then the ranges are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Looks like my pen's not working so great. Uh, this one is not a function. And the reason why this one's not a function, well, first of all, the domain is 0, 1, 2, and 3. And the range is 9, 7, and 5. And the reason why this is not a function is because of the number 1. The number 1 is one of the domains, and it has more than one range. Each domain can only have one range. Now, if you said the reason why this is not a function is because 9 has two different domains, that's irrelevant. The fact that a range has two domains does not matter. That does not matter in the question. So the only thing that matters is that each domain, each x, can only have one y. And what makes this one not a function is the fact that negative 1 and 2 tenths has two different ranges. So negative 1 and 2 tenths is one of the domains, so is 1 and 1 tenth, so is 1 and 1, seven, one and 7 tenths, and so is whatever number that is. Okay, so that was the warm-up, and today this lesson was, that was the activated question. This gets you thinking about discrete versus continuous, and that's what you're really going to do by the end of this class. Write the above statement using function notation. So function notation would be f of, f of, that's just the name of the function. So f of this case, I could be p for the amount of pounds. So the function of pounds is equal to $4 per pound plus the $2 for the tub. So that would be the function notation you're going to use to solve all of the answers from this point forward. So the statement would be the number, the total price is a function of the amount of pounds sold or the weight of the popcorn. It's always the dependent is a function of the independent. What is the independent? Well, I just said the dependent was the total price and the independent was the weight of the popcorn. What type of numbers are used in this? Uh, that would be whole numbers. They were all whole numbers in the last lesson because it was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can't buy four and a half swim shorts. But in this lesson, can you buy four and a half pounds of popcorn? Yes. That's the difference between this lesson and the last one. The last one was a discrete scenario. This one is continuous. So you could use non-whole numbers in this question, in this lesson. So it's going to use that same 4p plus 2 format. This times 4 plus 2 would be that answer. And then plot your points and label it, and then you can connect it, and you'll see that they're in a straight line. So this is practicing using function notation. A lot of the stuff you're going to see over and over and over and over again throughout this unit because it's all about functions. So this is function notation. So the P of 2 and 3 fourths, so that's the amount of pounds, is 2 and 3 fourths pounds. So you multiply that by 4 and then add 2, and then I believe you get an answer of $24.80, if my memory serves me right. This one over here, the probability of getting, oh wait, no, 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 sorry, huh, my memory doesn't serve me right. $24.80 is this one. And this one over here, I believe, was $13. And this one over here was 7 pounds. Notice the difference between these questions. A and B, they're giving you the independent variable and asking you for the dependent. Question C, they give you the dependent answer. You're being asked to find out what was the independent variable. So it's kind of the opposite of the kind of question. So you got to be careful when you're looking at stuff like that. All right, so then we have these scenarios where you're trying to figure out, is it discrete or continuous? The height of a ball thrown into the air. Well, a ball always has a height, no matter if it's been a half a second or three quarters of a second, it always has a height. So that is a continuous scenario. The muffins, I know we talked about this in class, but this is kind of uh, debatable. 
Uh, depends if you think they're going to cut up the blueberries or not, whether you can have a half a blueberry and a muffin. I tend to think you can have half a blueberry and a muffin. So 10 and a half blueberries and one muffin is possible, then you think the answer is continuous. If you think that that's not possible and if a blueberry is squeezed or cut in half and not going to use it anymore, then you would think that this is discrete. So it depends on your definition of what you think is in a muffin. The amount of flour needed for a bakery each day, so that's going to definitely be continuous because they're not always going to use exact amounts of pounds of flour. This one is going to be also be 100% continuous because temperature outside, it doesn't just go from 60 degrees to 70 degrees. You know, it's not like the corner of the room. You know how the corners of the room are really hot? They're 90 degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad joke. I know I probably used that one in class. So the temperature cannot just go from 40 degrees to 90 degrees instantly. It has to take time. And it could be 10 seconds. I mean, it could be a short amount of time, but it's got to be some amount of time where it was that temperature, every temperature in between. So that's continuous. The amount of money in the quarters in the piggy bank. Uh, that is definitely discrete unless you're cutting up quarters. Can't have half a quarter in a piggy bank. What time of day is a digital clock? Well, a digital clock, if you think about it, it goes from 12.15 and then it flips to 12.16. So therefore, that is a discrete question. There's no in between. It goes from one minute to the next and it just flips to the next one. All right, so the homework. Discrete versus continuous. The distance of the person from the ground related to the time as they ride a Ferris wheel. The person's height will always have a height, whether it's been a half a time around or a quarter of a time around the Ferris wheel. So that is definitely continuous. Uh, pen's not working so great here. And my justification is what I just said. So, yeah, I'm not going to write it here. Huh? you got to listen to me. Uh, it, you do have a height. Every, the entire time you're going around a Ferris wheel, no matter if you've gone around one time, two times, or three and a half times. If a half makes sense, it's continuous. The amount of daylight during a day throughout the calendar year. So the amount of daylight, this is a tricky one. This one is actually discrete. And the reason why this was discrete, because today we might have hours and 30 minutes of sunlight. But tomorrow we're going to have 9 hours and 32 minutes. There's no in-between. So believe it or not, there's like 2 minutes of sunlight either added or subtracted each day until you get to the, was that, the equinox. Sorry, I'm bringing back science here. Yeah, we're doing science and math. Uh, until you get to the equinox when it's equal day, equal night. Is that right? No, no, no. The equinoxes are in between. So those are the solstices. So you have the summer solstice and the winter solstice when you have the most sunlight and the least amount of sunlight. And each day you're adding two minutes. There's no in between. There'll never be a time where there's like nine hours and 31 minutes. I'm making this up, so don't fact check me. So what I'm trying to say is, is like two minutes of sunlight added each day. So there's not to be nothing in between that. The value of a car from the time the first purchase in 1978 to now, a car always has value, always. So this is definitely continuous. Now cars, almost all cars, decrease in value, unless they're like really old and they're a collector's item. But they're going to decrease a certain amount all the time, all the time. So there's never a time where it's not going to have any amount of value. Because that's really what discrete versus continuous is, as long as... The independent variable is something that could always be measured, then it's continuous. If it's not something that always has a measurement, doesn't always have a dependent answer, there's no in-between, then it's discrete. All right, thanks again for watching once again, and I hope I helped you. All right, thanks.